All right. Uh, hello. Welcome. How's it going? Good evening. Uh, <laughs> for <laughs> sorry, for everybody who is joining on YouTube after the fact, um, this is a live stream. So if you are li uh, here live, you can feel free to ask questions as stuff is going. Um, but if you're watching the VOD, um, just gonna do a little spiel about what it is that this uh, specific session is. It's more or less a sketchbook session. I'm just gonna take this sphere and kind of mash it around into a whole bunch of different shapes and kind of create like, I don't know, a creature or a character from it the way that I usually do on these sessions. Um, but there's not really like any uh, pre pre-made concept for it or anything. We're just concepting on the go. We're just having fun with it and treating it sort of like a sketchbook session. So if that is your thing, feel free to hang out. If not, there's a lot of other people on this channel who do like full length projects, who aren't here just doing like quick sketchy things, but rather like actual full polish stuff. So if you'd rather something like that or more in like a tutorial based format, um, Pixlogic actually, uh, the ZBrush channel, which is now under Maxon, actually has a lot of content based around that as well. So definitely check out all of the other artists that stream here. Um, but if you're, if you're cool with a sketchbook session, this is going for four hours like it usually does. So if you have something to work on beside or you have any questions as I'm going, feel free to ask. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna get started. After we wait for a few more people to kind of filter in as well. Hey Reaper, how are you doing? Hi Andre, how are you guys doing? Um, alright. We're gonna, hold on, give me one second. It's, uh, it's been a, I think a few weeks since I've been here. One sec. Alright. Uh, la la la. Hey, what's up, Kevlar? Doing good? Nice. Brazil, nice. Hi, welcome, welcome. Okay, all right, we're gonna get started. So, like usual, I am just going to, with symmetry, just kind of start making a whole bunch of random shapes. I mean, you could do this, like, gesturally as well. Like, you don't necessarily need to, um, I guess, you know, do everything in symmetry if you don't want to when you're doing just, like, you know, gestural sketches, but and just kind of like creating big uh, shapes. However, if you're just looking for some quick designs, doing stuff uh, within symmetry makes everything a lot easier. We're also going to be working a lot with uh, the artifacts that come with the uh, with working on really low resolution geometry as well. We're just gonna be using that with in, in conjunction with uh, Dynamesh to kind of create some really interesting shapes that you can then kind of um, work from as if it were like a sketch outline and then you're going on top with like, you know, a pen and refining kind of like if you were in 2D, now you're doing it in 3D. That's usually how I like to approach, you know, just doing some sketches uh, in 3D. So it's not it's not like anything you know for a final project or anything like that we're just we're just having fun i've been on like a, a little bit of like a bug kick so it'll probably be more or less buggy that's okay we all like bugs here right bugs are cool at least i think they are All right. You got GoZ to support. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I saw you guys talking about that in the Discord. That's good. What's up, Jace? Triple A. Me. It's me. How are you doing? Bugs are cool. I agree. They're so, they're, okay. They're not just cool looking, they're really fun to sculpt because I find a lot of people like, okay, so. You, if you aren't in the particular mood of getting a lot of reference, but you overall know how bugs kind of look, I feel like you can get away with a lot more with bugs because not everybody knows the intricate details 
of like how bug legs really work. I mean, you you know, there there are definitely a lot of creature artists and a lot of people that are really into animals and things like that that do know how they work, but the average person they'll be like, yeah, that looks like a bug good enough for me. That's gross. <laughs> so if you want to just kind of like do something quick and a little bit impressive but also gross out your relatives good way to do it is to just do a fantasy gross bug creature they're like yeah that looks like a carapace i'm done <laughs> yeah easier to rig because they're in like it's all sectional you don't have to worry about it's kind of like hard surface rigging for organics in a way <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add a body to this. Well, that's not going to be the body here. Let's see, make sure that this is symmetrical. Work off of it. I'm going to actually take everything down because my dynamic brush only goes up to this big. And I actually, I've grown to like the dynamic setting on the brush. So if you're finding that yours is going to like 5,000 max draw size and it's still not big enough. I mean, you can always adjust things in the pre preferences as well. Um, but keeping it the way that it is right now, I'm going to select all of my sub tools by clicking on this transpose all selected sub tools. Little pizza boxes as, uh, as Paul and company would call them. Um, and just kind of shrink them down. And uh, look, uh, where's our zero zero? We always kind of want to be working in the zero zero, by the way, because if you're not working in the zero zero, you might get some like weird things happening if you enable perspective or anything like that, because it's all based off of the zero zero. So if you enable perspective, but then you have your thing way off here, you know, it will it will be uh, kind of wonky and it won't. You can see it's not actually like you're not getting like real perspective when you turn it on there. However, if you put it over to the zero zero, and then you enable perspective, you're getting actual perspective here because it's all based off the zero zero. So make sure everything is kind of like, you know, in the center while you're working. Um, and now we've got a much more dynamic draw size, I guess you can say. Yes, you can use Unify Mesh as well. I like to do things manually just because everything is here and I don't have to go into like a menu or anything like that. But I just do it like that. Um, let's see, we're kind of, uh, thinking something a little bit more like this. One of my favorite things to do as well, while I'm just kind of creating, like, random shapes, is to just grab the, uh, masking. And kind of have fun with that as well as like uh when i'm using my sync hook is to enable oh hello accu curve and just kind of start pulling things out in a really sharp sharp crisp kind of thing like this This is going to be pretty fun. This guy. Oh. Kind of like the length, but we'll make it like thinner, I think. Do something like this. Make it a little bit more like a, you know, like one of those like horned can't, can't like beetles. Not cool, actually. Do love me some beetles. Will that be able to wrap around the sphere, though? Will what be able to wrap around the sphere? Not quite sure what you. Sorry if I missed that. Kind of just been going off. I'm just kind of creating the back area of uh, 
this dude's carapace. Um, let's see. Wondering, maybe I want to do something a little bit more extreme on the sides here. Let me do. It's kind of neat. Do that, and then here. Yeah, and I'm well aware of like all of the uh, the artifacting. That's like kind of part of my sketching process. You'll see once you um, Dynamesh stuff with all of this, it takes all of this stretch geometry and turns it into actual uh, geometry that you can sculpt on top of cleanly. And so I kind of use it as like sketch lines um, and then work off of like work on top of that as well. So I kind of create like some some base shapes here starting off and then I'll have all of that turn into actual geometry that I can use afterwards. Do some kind of like a mouth thing here. Let me give that a little bit more oomph. Uh, mm, do I like that? Not really sure. So many possibilities when sculpting bugs. You can literally do whatever you want. Unless you're doing something that's supposed to be, you know, scientifically accurate, of course. But we're not, we're not, we're not in that group right now. <laughs> I mean, of course, if you wanted to always go back and fix it up so that it would be, and then, of course, feel free. What brush am I using? So all my brushes, you can see them pop up right here when I change to them. So this one is Damien Standard. I, I go through um, my brushes, I have them all set up on my one through zero key. It's all, for these streams, most of what I do, at least for the initial um, sculpting, it's most of it is uh, standard like vanilla Z brush brushes. Like nothing is like too out there, you know, downloaded buying brushes or anything like that so it's all stuff that everybody can use um my one through zero brushes are one is clay buildup two is damien standard three is h polish four is snake hook five inflate six pinch seven is mac cut mech a which is the only one that i would be using that you would have to download um eight is slash two which you can get inside of the light box menu in the brush section so it's all stuff that comes with ZBrush, except for the Macnet brush. But that one, I, it's like, you know, you can you can use like a chisel brush, you can use um, Pinch, and you can use Damien Standard as well. So like, there's no, no bad, no bad vibes there. Yeah, Dan, yeah, I actually do get asked that. I get asked that like all the time. And yes, I do sculpt in VR as well. Um, but I use it in combination with ZBrush, so anything that I'll be doing in VR, it won't be a final thing that I'll post, just because it's... It has... well, I, I don't have, like, a computer that's running, like, 3080s, you know? I, I have a 2070, which is doing just fine, and I've got a Ryzen 9, uh, 3900 series, so it's just... it's doing just fine, but it's not, like... 
Like, I'm not getting, like, high fidelity detail in VR, right? Like, the, I'm, I'm dealing with sketches, gestural stuff. It's not really anything that you want to be spending a lot of time doing, in my opinion. Especially with all of the eye strain that comes with VR. Oh my gosh, it the eye strain is brutal. Um, but anything that I'll do in VR, I'll bring it over to ZBrush and, uh, and clean it up. And, uh, you know... Kind of create create something from that. Actually, I can show you the latest one. I'm going to be. I sketched this one in VR, and I'm cleaning it up now in ZBrush. Uh, I'll load it up and show you. I've got this dude. So cleaning cleaning him up here, my beetle. Turn his uh, casing off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big old chunky beetle. So that'll be fun to finish up. Um, but yeah, like I, I'll show you something. So the stuff that I was getting out of, um, like straight out of VR. Like, a lot of this is cleaned up now, but straight out of VR, it's like, you know, it might look okay when you're actually sculpting it in VR, but, you know, you get it into here, and it's really, it's just not, um, you know, high fidelity is pretty, pretty crunchy, which is totally fine for me. I don't mind the crunchy stuff at all, but then you're gonna have to really clean stuff up, right? Like, this, this is, this is nasty, but again, um, it's more of, like, you're gonna do stuff for just specifically renders or concept or anything. It's just really fast, so you know you can do that and then separate it via colors. It'll save all of that. It's cool because then in ZBrush you can do a whole bunch of other things a lot faster as well. So it's it's good. It's good. It's good to uh, you know combo it up. Let me just delete this so it doesn't bog me down. It's chunky. Um, my VR headset is the Oculus Quest 2. I... not rich. <laughs> And I got it on sale a while ago. You'll know there's like a pattern with things that I get. It's always on sale. <laughs> the Cindique that I have got it on sale. You're the on sale. <laughs> what do you think is better? An anatomy that is visually interesting or that is correct in terms of mechanics? When we're talking about human anatomy, if we're not doing something that is stylized, then we want it to be correct. However, we're dealing with film and games and TV and entertainment, then you're going to always want to favor something that's visually pleasing. Now, when I'm talking about that, I don't mean that you forfeit functionality for aesthetics. You shouldn't ever have to do that. But bogging yourself down with the technicalities of if a specific muscle is looking exactly how it would in a specific situation is more along the lines of um, hyper realism, like you would be doing something more hyper real focused than actual artistic anatomy. So there's a difference between like medical anatomy and anatomy that you would be, you know, showing, uh, you know, an actual muscular system with bones underneath and the skin is simulated on top and the fur is simulated on top of that. All of that, you have to be pretty precise. However, when it comes to artistic anatomy, it's about kind of sculpting what you would expect to see rather than what is, you know, what what you have to see with like a realistic thing. So something that makes sense. And that is an intuition that is kind of built over time of doing a lot of gesture sculpting um, or drawing a lot of anatomy practice. And then also taking yourself, like doing reference 
studies, a lot of reference studies, not just copying them, but focusing on like, you know, different measurements, etc., and learning from them. And then putting aside your references and from your head practicing what it is that, you know, you uh, were studying so that you're embedding different shorthands and different sets of knowledges into your, I guess, your working memory of like, you know, when you're actually doing things. So it's important to do it with reference and then do some sketching without and then v revisit your reference so that you can see, you know, where things um, exaggerated in a good way, in a bad way, step away from your work, come back to it, see if it looks weird. If you ever get that feeling that that looks weird, uh, that's a good thing because that means that your eye is learning, like, you know, you're training yourself and you can actually get better with it. But uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't always lean on it has to be technically correct all the time if it looks good then i think especially when it comes to games and entertainment and things of that nature like statues etc if it's good artistically i think that works well enough like if you can look at it and you can believe as an average person you can believe that that is functioning and that can move you're 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 pretty good Because nobody's gonna be able to be like, I don't know, like you'd have to dedicate quite literally your entire, entire life into hyper-realistic anatomy of every single kind in order to, you know, like it's, it's a bit, it's, it's like, <laughs> we're not, we're not God, right? We're, we're artists. And so you really want to be sculpting and drawing, um, what you expect to see, what you want to see that still feels functional, right? There's a balance to be struck. What's up, Leonard? Hey, Eric. Hey, Moshi. What do you think is... Uh, got that one. Got that. Got that. <laughs> the king of all lice, yeah. You're pretty new to sculpting. No courses or so. You're just getting your pen display, etc. Is the ZBrush a softer... Where the character starts to move, getting the motions. No, it's not actually. Uh, Stefan, so this is specifically a sculpting program. Uh, you can do different things within the sculpting program. Obviously, you know, you can uh, do baking, which is essentially taking your details of your sculpt and putting it down onto the actual low res model. Um, you can do UVing, you can do some basic painting. Uh, some projection painting, etc. All of that is in here, but actually doing the whole modeling suite, which you're talking about, from like that you would see uh, animations where you would rig something and animate it, um, and then render a frame by frame movie, or even get a game started. That's not ZBrush. ZBrush is a specialized tool to help you get really high fide high fidelity detailed characters, um, clean sculpts, etc. from it. Display port on your 2070 was better. You even... Oh, really? That sucks, Reaver. Yeah, that, that blows. That blows. I got one of like so I don't know if my my port is bad. I just kind of assume that it's always going to be kind of uh, wishy washy. So with my port, I got um, one of the like all of the plugs that I have. I've got like kind of like a lock that goes into it. It's like really like snug. Like you have to really have to like yank it to get it out. Um, okay, I'm not a huge fan of this. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes I do that, by the way. If you see me doing this, it's because I might think that I have the regular mask selected, but I had selected my lasso, so I'll just... Don't worry, it's nothing. <laughs> Or make this a spiky guy. The big old spiky boy. No problem, Stefan. Still, even if you're not looking to like if this is if you're looking to do animation and stuff like that, ZBrush is a tool um, to learn for specifically like modeling, character modeling, even certain aspects of environment modeling, um, and 3D printing as well. ZBrush is really good for all of that stuff. So. Cuts the display out if you wiggle it a little bit. Oh, that sucks. That sucks, but uh, that sucks, but um, you might okay. It might sound weird. I don't know if it would bottleneck your uh. It shouldn't. It really shouldn't. If you have a like a short enough cord, anyways. I don't know if it'll bottleneck your performance with your um, your Cintiq. I don't think it should. Uh, try getting one of those adapters. There are um, uh, female to male adapters that you can get, and you can just kind of, and it has like a lock on the end of it. I found one on Amazon. I don't remember what it was called specifically, but I found one on Amazon that has a really tight, like it has like a clasp. Um, so that might actually help you because you can just like shove it in there and it like, it like clicks. Like it's like, it's like in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sounds kind of weird. When you talk about plugs and you have to say, oh, male or female, you know, it's just... Anyways, there's something that makes it a tighter fit on Amazon if you can find it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no worries, Stefan. No worries. All questions welcomed. That's what we're here for. We're just here to vibe, listen to music, answer questions. Talk about female to male ports. Yo, everybody joins the stream at a weird time, HC. Don't worry, it's a rite of passage. AJ <laughs> Hun, I don't know, something a little bit uh, chunky beetle like. It's like a little bit, some kind of a fantasy beetle creature. I want to do my HD. I am going to and spear. I guess. So I have a question. How many legs? How many legs do you think we should go with? What What's the uh, the leg? The leg count today. Eight? You want it to be arachnid? Six, so you want it to be insect. Eight, arachnid. Eight on either side, super arachnid. <laughs> Hyper, one leg. <laughs> what? Normal, okay, Doom. Okay. Okay, we're done talking about plugs. <laughs> Make six. Hmm. Millipede. So millipede. Of, all right, I don't know. Now, now I'm confused. Now I have too many answers. Well.
three strokes. Hey man, it's the secret of AccuCurve. AccuCurve, it, it does things for your body. It's like... It's like... Exercising. Or something. Honestly, it's the same as drawing, okay? If you're drawing, here's like a hack for you. Here's a hack. This is this is amazing. An amazing hack. You're going to you're going to thank me. It's like this goes for all things in art. Listen. Curves and round shapes and drawing with roundness, you know, like with smooth strokes and like beautiful curves and things like that is it's advanced, if you believe it or not, okay? If you want things that stick out and are very easy to read right off the bat, even for yourself as you're designing, angle everything. Figure out with straight lines where stuff goes, including like, you know, when you're drawing, you can just kind of create a, a diamond shape for the eye where it would go in the eye socket. It makes it so much easier to figure out where the corners are going to be going, etc. And get appealing shapes because then you know exactly where the apex of all of these curves will be going. So you think about it is, it, you know, like you're drawing or you're sculpting in a spline before you've actually created the spline. You're creating the points where everything will curve to. It makes everything so much easier. You're taking out like, you're just kind of like adding a step in there to kind of figure out the design and the, uh, the silhouette of stuff. And then you can smooth stuff out afterwards to contrast a lot of the sharp edges that you'll be throwing in there. Trust me, you're gonna. You're, it, it'll be a breakthrough for <laughs> for some of you. When it when it came to life drawing for me, uh, one of my friends, one of my classmates in college, was just like, "Dude, why are you doing everything? Like, why are you having such a hard time? You know, uh, doing gestures. Like, your thirty seconds are so like squiggly, and you can never get the arms in. Like, what are you doing?" Uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be focusing so much on the curves like you know I'm sure that you get good at it eventually but why don't you just do everything with straights and the second I started doing that it was just like whoa that's insane all of a sudden I'm like I'm not bad anymore I'm passing <laughs> it's 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 kind of cool I still remember that to this day like my I, shout out to Ricardo with his uh Sage advice. Why do you make it stretch so much? So you think about it like, you know, everything's gonna be dynamashed afterwards. It's kind of the same with like sketching. You make all of these lines and then you can kind of take those lines and refine them afterwards. It's the same sort of thing. So I, I allow it to be all stretchy because when I dynamesh it, all of this turns into usable geometry. So you can kind of use it as like a, like a sketching base, right? Think about it kind of like an underpaint. So I'm, the reason why I keep going back and throwing back to 2D is because I started as a 2D artist. So a lot of this is making, it makes sense to me, right? Um, and how I operate in 2D and I brought that over to 3D when I sculpt, so. It's kind of the same thing. Hi Lei, sorry, I don't, I don't speak, uh, any language outside of English here, unfortunately. I don't have the ability to translate on the fly. But hello! If you have a question, um, if you can put it in English, it'll be easier for me to answer you. Sorry for the inconvenience.
Yeah, yeah, kind of like a, a bug, a bug like beast thing. I don't think I'm. I, I probably won't leave it just as a bug. You know, it'll probably like a, a monster bug of some kind. I think these these legs need to come out further. Yeah, let's do something like that. The patience of a monk? Actually, Matt, dude, I have the impatience of a squirrel. Like, that's the whole reason why I just, like, sculpt this way. I know it doesn't really seem that way because I'm, like, taking quite a long time right now, but it's because I'm streaming. If you saw me sculpting while I'm not streaming, I'm jumping sub-tool to sub-tool to sub-tool here, there, there, everywhere, and then um, you know, it, nothing is methodic. The way that I work is chaos. It's absolute chaos. So... Not dynameshing is actually part of that, like, chaotic, like, impatience. <laughs> if I dynamesh everything, I end up... I end up going kind of, like, in this, like... I don't get the shapes that I want as fast as I want because things start to get a little bit too blobby right off the bat and I can I can't see as well when I'm I'm kind of moving faster. But I trust me, I don't I don't have a lot of patience um for artwork. <laughs> I think I think I used to. Um no, actually no, that's a lie. When I was in school and I had to do paintings, I was like, I would leave that to the last possible second, stay up all night and like be screeching because it was so slow because I had to wait for the paint to dry. That was, that was high school. <laughs> college when uh so the reason why i'm not an animator because i went to school for 2d animation the reason why i'm not an animator is because of patience i i really enjoyed like the rough stage and like um blocking keyframes right blocking keyframes and you know doing like you know big beats and even storyboarding was pretty okay but then as soon as i had to like fill in the gaps fill in the cracks do in-betweens i screeched I screeched. Everything was a smear. Everything was a smear. <laughs> ah, who brought the bots? Oh my God. Okay, hold on. I gotta go. <laughs> Go do some some bot banning in one second. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Can I even do this? Oh, Jesus Christ. Can I remove this? Is it removing it? I hope it's gone. All right. Yeah, I know. The bot... I don't know, man. Okay, I want to see if I can, like, clear the chat. Actually, let's just, like... We <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Okay, we're good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Stop the screen. <laughs> yeah, I don't have like full admin controls though, so because this is not my channel, I'm just streaming here volunteer, so sorry if the, the bots are 
I mean, I can only do so. <laughs> I can only do so much. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Drawing the same thing a hundred times isn't so fun then? No, it's not. And I I I don't like the uh Yeah, I don't I don't like the idea of um grinding. I guess you like you know like art grinding. I don't like that. And I find it's actually a lot of people get the wrong idea from it too. Like, oh just sit there and just draw and draw and draw and draw. Like that's not productive. Especially if you have a very impatient mind, like uh like i am like i have like i can't i can't just sit there and be like okay i have to do the same thing over and over again i need it to be engaging right like it can't it, yeah yeah i'm not very uh what i'm i'm meticulous when when it isn't a very engaging the uh, subject matter but you know, when it comes to, like, just, I guess, default, like, anatomy, it has to be, like, there has to be, like, a purpose as to what I'm doing it for. Like, I can't just be, uh, you know, studying the human body and just, like, be copying a body because I'm not gonna, I feel like I'm not actually gonna learn anything from doing that, right? Like, that's not a good way to learn, in my opinion. Um, but if you're doing human anatomy, I find, like, a good way to study it, right? If you if you think the way that I do, you want everything to be fun, especially when you're doing art. I feel like it has to be fun. If you're doing art and it's not fun. I don't like. Why are you doing it? it it's just going to be torturous, in my opinion. So if you want to like study anatomy, and let's say you wanted to learn more about the arm, right? Then why not make it themed, right? Like I like I like doing I don't know monster arms or like a man's arm, but maybe it was like crocodilian or something, because at the same time, like, yeah, sure, it's not exactly human anatomy, but you're learning where everything goes at the same time as making it interesting because you really like crocodiles, right? So you're like, oh, if I get all of this stuff here and then, you know, creatively learn how to put crocodile scales on top, you're doing two things at once and you're making better connections in your head to make it kind of stick, if that makes any sense. So I kind of like to do that when I'm learning anatomy is kind of give it a point. Um, gesture also is really good. So again, T-pose anatomy studying. No, 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 no. I would do something gestural. Um, you know, even take like a, a cool picture of your hand and some like artsy lighting or something like that. And then try to learn from that picture of your hand in the artsy lighting instead of you know, something less engaging where you're just looking at it like this, right? Um, and another thing too is like with images, you will learn a lot if you just take the image and then do like a snapshot and then draw over top of that image yourself, you know, where are the muscles, you know, what is the main form? Try and find where the main shapes are and learn from it that way because now you're engaging your brain in a different way than just copy paste, copy paste. You're deconstructing. And deconstructing things I find is way more helpful than just copying exactly what you see because if you're just copying what you see, you're not understanding why it works that way or what's going on under the hood, right? So that's why I suggest learning this way. It's a little bit different than just, oh, here's a reference. Let me just like, Okay, copy that, you know? That way you're also going to develop a style, mind you. This is a question that people ask a lot too. It's like, oh, uh, what about my style, my style? That naturally comes to you the more practice that you do. It's just a natural thing that'll happen and you shouldn't actively be like pressuring yourself to get that style, you know? You'll get there with more practice, more practice. Um, but a lot of that will happen through the way that you're learning your subject matters, right? If you're just copy pasting, where are where where is the part of you that you're putting into your artwork? You might not be finding that. You might just be copy pasting, right? Uh, what's up, B? What are we sculpting? A beetle. I'm just talking too much. How you doing, B? Symmetrical sculpting, a figure pose is very hard. Asymmetrical sculpting, yeah. 
yeah, T pose is great. Um, you know, just to get you started and stuff like that. But if you really want to start working on, I, I really recommend trying gestural sculpting. You don't have to do full figure gesture stuff either. I'm saying take an arm, pose an arm or something like that, and just work like that. Do little things here and there. It really helps with like finding your movement, and that translates to all things because then you start to develop a rhythm to the brush strokes that you do um to you know just the overall forms rhythm is really important and you're not going to get that just copying things and then doing it in t-pose it, it's very stiff it's like you know you're you're trying to play art on hard hard robotic mode right like it's you can pick some things up but you're, you're gonna have a better time if you can feel a flow with your sculpt as artsy fartsy as that sounds um Let's see. You think your Cintiq 22 has a lot of delay for Sculpt and ZBrush? No, actually, it's very responsive. It's very responsive. I guess it really depends on how picky you are about that. Um, there's like, a, if I'm being really like hyper about it, it's really responsive, but there might be like, maybe I'm um, like, <laughs> like a couple millisecond delay or something like that, but it is like negligible for somebody who really doesn't, who's not a freak about it, you know? Like it's, it's not, it's not, it's negligible. Like I can, I can sculpt fast enough is what I'm saying. Like it does not matter. Hercules Beetle asked, yeah, something like that. Uh, what's this practice you're talking about? Well, Spooky, your new artist. Let me tell you that you've only just begun your lifelong journey of practicing, always practicing. If you want to be an artist, you're going to always be practicing. And if you think that you can ever stop practicing, I'm sorry, it's not, that's not, you're just going to have to keep practicing. <laughs> you're going to practice until you're dead. So my Instagram, yeah, all my, all my socials right here. Yeah, hands or arms is really, really great way and very uh, important. Hands, don't don't just put mittens everywhere. Hands, get to know your hands. <laughs> You've got a good reference right in front of you. Look at this. Oh, get out of here. No, no. Get, guys, spam the chat, hurry, <laughs> get them out of here. Get out! Get out of there! Go! Yeah, you can flood again. Go! Go! Flood the ch <laughs> Get him out of here! Get him! <laughs> Alright, thank you. <laughs> <Get out. laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> the compression tends to work out better on A pose, too, but if you're drawing from side to front, top view doesn't work from top view. What are you talking about? Uh, the compression? Oh, on A pose, yeah, if you're talking about like moving this, yeah, A pose is, um, it's pretty much standard unless you're working with something very specific, like T pose. A lot of things can be done with A pose and it's like just in general a lot, a lot better. I, I have very rarely been asked to actually T pose things. Um, I think the last time I T posed something was when I was working on... I think it was next gen. That was when I was T posing stuff. Otherwise, everything is like A pose. Yeah. Hey, what's up, crew? YouTube, it's not, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty annoyed. Like, I, I don't know. I don't have. Uh, I don't have. An ability to just like I've reported these bots, but it's just like they're gonna keep coming. So I apologize for the um, the gross bots. If I could do anything to change that, I would. But alas, here we are. Okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna actually remove this bottom bit here, and we're gonna start doing some more sculpting. 
separate the top carapace thing with the bottom. What's up, babies? You have mini game in chat every 15 minutes, exactly. You guys have a reason to spam then. <laughs> like frustrating too right because like it shows up on stream but eh. it is what it is uh lay i or i guess you're asking if it's a ladybug it's some kind of a bug again i'm i'm so sorry i don't speak anything but english and a bit of french uh, uh, like a, a fr French as much as like maybe a three-year-old would speak it <laughs> so it's a Digimon beetle true 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 you know how to make your own matte caps so you really cover this sometime um Hi, a little bit. I don't really make materials within ZBrush. Uh, I kind of know the basics of it. Like I know how to I really the bet most that I'll do is mess around in here with the overall um, Well, not with matte cap gray If I were to take something like basic material um, And just kind of mess around with like the ambient the specular curve, etc to get different like ideas that's pretty much the most I'll do because I render externally. I usually render in Keyshot and do a whole bunch of stuff in, in uh, Photoshop afterwards. So I can recommend you though. Uh, Pablo has a whole thing about matte caps. ZBrush Guides. Uh, does, is it still ZBrushGuides.com? Do you guys know? I think he had to change it. Let me just check really quick. Um, yeah, ZBrush Guides, is that the store? ZBrush, ZBrushGuides.com? Yeah, he's got, here, I'll just put it, this is Pablo's uh, thing, website. You'll be able to find a whole bunch of really good tutorials there about like, you know, there's mat caps included, like how to make your own mat caps. Uh, let's see. I am the mod. Don't test me, Arian. <laughs> Don't you test me. Um, let's see. Oh, your hyper real characters have mittens. It's your style. I swear to God. Like, people who say like, yeah, I know the anatomy is wrong, but it's my style. Like, woo, <laughs> just learn. It's okay. Just learn. <laughs> You can have a style, but like, bro, bro. All right, I'm gonna mesh this. Do some more here. Grab this thing.
big chunky. Chunky chunky. How's this beetle anatomy all in your brain? Um, I like looking at beetles. Again, like you'd be surprised at how much you actually learn just from looking at stuff. I think I look at stuff more than I actually do art, but it's the way that you look at things that's so important. If you have an analytical mind, you're in luck. Like if, you, if you're always just default wondering how things work, then you're you're in a good place. And if you don't, then maybe you want to start thinking that way as well. So when you see something cool, actually start to think about it in like just a, you know, not an overarching kind of way, but oh hey, there's certain parts of this that I really like. Why? You know, is oh this area right here is kind of looks like a triangle and then these little things they stick in your head, right? The when you're just looking at pictures. <laughs> You use an iPhone? No, I don't. I don't actually have a iPhone. I heard about the the 3D scanner. It would be pretty cool to use, but I don't have. Um, I don't have the. I have a, I have an Android um, S21 Ultra. Yeah, S21 Ultra. So it's not. Um, it doesn't have the lidar thing. I think the S. It was either the S20 or the newer. No, I think it was the S20 that uh, Ultra that had the lidar. Uh, yeah, that is true, Gambit, and that's what I was kind of like trying to explain earlier about artistic anatomy, right? Because you're you're being correct, but you're also exaggerating and kind of doing things in a way that looks right, that maybe in those specific positions or in that specific circumstance, it wouldn't actually be that way, but it works well enough, and it's what you expect to see rather than what it actually is. Right? So artistic anatomy is sort of like an idealization of everything, where it's not exactly like, you know, one-to-one -one with a picture like you would be doing for hyper real um, in VFX or something like that. But it's it's good enough that um, you're also incorporating your style into it and making it something more, a little, a little oomph, you know? Because if you look at just like regular, regular picture of, uh, of outside, looks beautiful and everything, right? And it's accurate to like real life, but then maybe you want to give it a little oomph, so you put a filter over top of it. Doesn't mean that it's not real, it just it's got, it's got a little oomph to it. <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna actually flatten this entire thing because it's not making sense. I'm gonna flatten and then this. Let's do... I'm gonna play around with the overall shape, so I might go back and forth with some stuff here. Because I'm not exactly happy... with the... Uh, this guy. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of create some kind of a uh, like neck housing here. Make it make a little bit of sense. And that comes here. And this guy. 
here. Hmm. Okay, a little bit more of like a ball, I think. On this. How many arms are you going to create? I don't know. I don't know. People are saying millipedes. Some people are saying arachnid. Some people are saying just regular insects. I don't know. Hey, Az, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. What were you saying? Is ZBrush the way to go or is it fine that you use? It's fine that you use Blender. However, if you wanted to do things that are, um, you know, like Blender, like I've used Blender in industry settings. However, I don't use it like they're sculpting in industry settings, right? Um, so if you wanted like a better tool set for sculpting, I mean, you can you can use Blender, but you're not going to be able to do really high res stuff with a lot of detail. Some people will want to argue with that, but I know because I've used both and ZBrush is still like it still blows it out of the water right now. Um, if you're doing some really simple stuff, then Blender is totally fine to stay with. But if you ever wanted to do like high fidelity detail creature stuff, um, things for film, um, a lot of things for AAA games, etc., like you're going to want to use ZBrush, you're not gonna be able to get that level of detail, at least in a good amount of time without completely bogging down Blender or having to get a ridiculous amount of add-ons that might not guarantee you the same tool set anyways. There are a lot of the basics there that are shared amongst programs though, so if you are doing something simple enough, you don't need um, anything more. But I would recommend that you try ZBrush if you haven't, because it does feel a lot more organic when you're sculpting. It feels a lot more responsive when you're sculpting. So. Um, to that degree, I would say it's worth it just trying it anyways. Uh, let's see. You ch change tools so fluid- yeah, I mean like if you're doing- if you're using the program a lot, you get used to it. Like, I've got a lot of stuff just on my keyboard, right? So... Not a... Not too crazy. Yeah, I spend a lot of time sculpting though, like that's my whole thing, like it's literally my career. Like I am a sculptor, right? Um, a sculptor, an illustrator, etc. The character designer. So a lot of what I do, character artist as well, I'm not gonna leave that one out. I just haven't had to do like... I, I've been doing mostly biz stuff stuff, so I usually just leave that one for last these days, but yes, uh, a lot of what I do is just sculpting, so if you're more of like a generalist and you, you're you kind of dipping your toes into a whole bunch of different things, then perhaps, uh, you know, things might be a little bit slower, but the longer you spend doing work inside of a program, the easier it gets. Why is my light flickering, bro? Stop. Ah, okay. The crap from Love, Death and, Death and Robots. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I love that thing. I love that episode. It was really cool. 
<laughs> I really like that episode. Honestly, most of the stuff from Love, Death, and Robots this season was really, really good. Story-wise is eh, you know, but um, visuals were pretty great. Responsible for still paying. Oh, really, Reaper? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, thanks, Mosin. I'm I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you like my air station. Um, yeah, I'm freelance. I freelance for studios, though. So, uh, a lot a lot of uh, a lot of my work I'm doing, like, as a freelance like slash contract artist, um, artist for hire for studios. So that ranges uh, from VizDev, like which includes illustration and stuff like that, like sculpting, illustration, character design, sculpting, illustration, blah blah. If you're freelance, would you do tuition? What do you mean, like, like teaching? Starting in ZBrush next term at school, so freaking hype. Nice, yeah, you're gonna have fun. It, it might be a little bit frustrating at first, if I'm gonna be honest, just because the tool set is very different from your typical 3D package. But once you get past the learning curve, just like even a week straight of using it, you're gonna feel it's a lot faster and faster and faster. It's just a really sharp learning curve. Yeah, ZBrush Core Mini is free, free forever. It's like a super stripped down version of ZBrush. It only includes um, Sculptures Pro. Do I have a Discord group? I do. It's not very active, but if you needed to, like, if you wanted like a little quiet community to hang out in, that's uh, that's our Discord. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's not super active. I guess I can just give you guys the invite anyways if you want it. Change this, generate this, copy. Here we go. There you go. Tutorial series on YouTube. Oh, I, I know. I keep... My problem is actually just like sitting there to like just do it. Okay, so oh my gosh. I'm all over the place. I will literally jump from thing to thing to thing to thing. I have this list on my desktop of just things that are all work in progress, work in progress, work in progress, work in progress, because I can't just like I told you before, I have impatience with my personal stuff. So I'll jump here, there, all over the place. And it's just like this massive list of things that I need to get done that I have not so actually making a tutorial is probably if that ever happens it will be an accomplishment and i deserve i i deserve the biggest pat on the back <laughs> for focusing enough to actually do it it requires so much um planning to get a tutorial done that's why I like these live streams right because i can help out like live like real time i can just answer your question if you have any but uh I mean if that's not if that's not good enough. Because I feel I feel you. I'm sorry. Also, like there's so many people that have uh tutorials on YouTube, right? So I feel like uh I don't really know what it is that I would be offering that's different. Oh, one-on-one -on -one tutor. So you're talking about like a uh, a mentorship. Mm, I've considered it before. It's it's like time though. We'll see if it ever happens. I'll announce it. Trust me. But uh, 
it's not on the it's not on the agenda again if you have any questions so absolutely feel free to hit me up on any of these socials in messages and i'll do my best to help you out or send you resources etc lots of people ask me about like oh what's you know what's the best place to learn this or that or do you know anybody who might have a tutorial for this or that i'm not going to be your google obviously but i can help you with like terms if you don't know them etc so just do my best to help out where i can but a lot of it is going to be just doing a lot of stuff that you really really like right what is the difference working inside studios instead of external freelancers? So if you're working inside of a studio, um, obviously you're going to be a part of their... Actually working inside studio, you're either going to be hired full time, which you would be privy to benefits and things like that, or you're going to get shafted by getting hired as contract artists and you won't have any benefits, but you're still told to go in all the time that is uh that's not something that i deal with but some people are hired as contract artists and have to do that anyways without any benefits that that sucks that sucks that sucks huge i think a lot of animators have to go through that um but the biggest difference between freelance and uh in studio is just the type of work that you're doing and the lack of communication as well you're not going to be communicating as much with every aspect of the team if you're freelance, you're you, like for me, for example, um, I only have to really work with like a handful of people at any given time. A lot of the time it's even just one point of contact and I'm just sending them, like they'll just send me pitches. I'll send them work back. I might receive some feedback or something, but a lot of the time I'll send them um, a package of things and they will do their presentations, their pitch presentations, etc. Because a lot of this stuff that I do is like, blue sky um kind of like sandbox like exploration so i'll send them a whole bunch of stuff and they'll present things they'll get back to me oh the client like this that or the other thing what can you do can you what do you think about uh you know working on changing this aspect of it sure then send it back or whatever so it's like a maybe a one or two person thing whereas like if you're in studio and you're, if you if you were to be on a blue sky kind of like R and D thing, then you would have like a team of people doing that, and you'd all be working together, and things would be delegated differently. If I'm a, as a freelancer, I don't get to, I, I usually don't talk to the other freelancers that a studio would be working with. Like, you know what I mean? It would just be like I'm going directly to the director. I'm going directly to the art director. It's not really oh, I'm talking to everybody on the team all at once and I know what's going on, like social aspect that way. A lot of the time you're kind of removed. Um, so in that case, it can be socially isolating for sure. Also no benefits, etc. And you have to really vouch for yourself. That's a big one too. When you're in studio, other people can vouch for you. When you're alone, you have to be a little bit, you got to kind of grow a little bit of a backbone, a little bit of a spine and you got to <laughs> believe in yourself, you know? So <laughs> um, and don't be afraid to always be on top of things yourself if you're in studio other people a lot of the time will be like uh you know there's going to be like one-on-one -on -one meetings um you know team meetings etc when you're freelance you're usually not having team meetings i mean there's been a few times where i've been invited to team meetings if i'm on uh you know in production rather than like you know concept phase or anything like that um, but most of the time I, do, I there's not really like these big team meetings or anything like that. It's quite literally just create a package, send it off, wait for feedback, like very, very straightforward, like back and forth kind of thing like that. Whereas, uh, everything else studio wise is more collaborative and, um, they'll always kind of know what <laughs> they, they should always know what it is that you're working on at any given time. Freelance for me, like if you're a good, good business person you know person if you're um if you value your own self like your own business then you're going to want to be reaching out and keeping tabs on tasks and making sure that you're on schedule for them rather than the other way around right you're very much in control of what the schedule is going to look like you know your own time management etc you have to be your own kind of producer in that sense as well so if they're like, oh, hey, we need this by this date, then you need to manage everything and make sure that you tell them a lot of the time 
hey, so I'm gonna send you this on this date. If you can get feedback to me by this date, then I can continue and send you another thing by this date, right? So you're creating your own like schedule for that deadline. Whereas if you're inside of a studio, you have producers and project managers doing that kind of stuff for you. So things are a lot more, um, like you don't have to wear so many hats, essentially. And hopefully that answers that. I know I expanded way too much on that. I'm sorry. All right. Um... Oh, thanks, Killa. Welcome. Did you have so many finish? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard, right? Because like ZBrush is so fun to just like get in and just start sketching some stuff and get like really like dirty with it that a lot of the time you end up with uh, with more sketches than you do finished projects. So that's that is um, that's my kryptonite as well. I mean HC, like the the free, the free stuff is all here. I'm I'm here for free. This is not a paid. Like I'm volunteer here, so these streams are all free. Most work remote now. Um, I think there's a lot of studios trying to get people to come back in, but again, I am I am my own uh, art. Like I'm my own business. I am a freelance independent artist, so. Anytime that I've been working for people after my last studio job, which was at Tangent for Next Gen, everything after that has been freelance. So I've been there freelance for a few years now. Um, yeah, I would say freelance is definitely like better for introverted people. If you need socialization, it can be pretty bad for your mental health if you're not because uh, if you're not if you're not good at managing your time one and you're like working like 14 hours a day and then you have no time for anything then that sucks but if you're good at time management and then you've got a lot of free time but you know your everybody else is like all of your friends would have been in studio and stuff and you don't have any extracurricular activities where you're making friends um then it can be pretty bad too so i <laughs> So it's uh it's socially, mentally, it can be pretty taxing, yeah. How do you prepare your sculpts for your contracts clients? Are there sculpts designs, uh, or do you also optimize them in some way for clients' needs? Yeah, it depends on what the client needs and how fast they need it. Sometimes I'll just whip some nasty thing over to them, right? Because they're just like, we need this immediately, and so it can be a little bit like whatever, but they're just gonna be building it again from the ground up, so it doesn't really matter to them. But most of the time, I try to make sure that everything is uh, at least clean enough that they're not going to have any issues when they opening it they're not going to have any issues dyna meshing it zero meshing it they're not going to have any like non-manifold ge geometry issues if the client is saying we're going to send this right over to be modeled from what you're doing um which is not always the case a lot of the time it's just a sculpt to give reference for what the you know the client likes and doesn't like it's just treat it like a concept art um but if if it's getting thrown over to a modeler. I've been on the modeling side where I've had to deal with some nasty things before, so I try to do my best to clean it up and give them like either if it's an A pose or a T pose if they need it. Uh, but usually that's discussed beforehand if they need that, so I'll be able to work on two separate. I'll make sure that there is a cleaned up version and then there's one that I can just get messy and pose for the client, right? Yeah, T Tomas does uh, critiques on Mondays. That's true, Ref. It's true. Um, yeah, if you want to send me anything, feel free on like uh, Instagram or on Facebook or any any of my socials. Like, send me. Fine. Save your stretched faces normally. Wait, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be. No, Dynamesh, usually if you're doing them uh, high enough resolution, it's pretty good, right? So Dynamesh at. Yeah, there, see? It saved everything. Now I can kind of go over top of it. I usually, like, I don't need it to be super clean. It's just using this as, like, a sketching base for, uh, for everything else that I'm gonna put over top. Like, I don't really care if it's all nasty. Hi, Black. How are you doing? Yeah, 
See you, soul. Have a good sleep. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, we're gonna do this one. Don't match this. There we go. And don't match that. Actually, I have a, a, a fun trick here. I like I like to do this. Um, in Lazy Mouse, turn Lazy Mouse on, give it a lazy step, maybe of one, turn this down to this. Actually, let's do 0.8. Should be good. Turn the Z intensity up on my inflate. Now, actually turn it up even more. There we go. give this a different vocal shift. Uh, we'll change that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I need to do a little neato burrito. Easy, fun, fun patterns to play around with. A little bit of texture. You can do this kind of stuff with like any brush that you have too. It's really quite easy if you want to do a repeating pattern. Like if you didn't want like a circle, right? You wanted to do something a little bit more square, like you can do the same thing here. Like that. Same thing, um, you know. You can do anything, and you bring in like any of your own alphas as well. Uh, if you do something more like this, though, you'll get some dirty. But I like just basic shapes. Turn that off. Yeah, yeah, it's neat. It's easy. No tricks. Tricks are for kids. Ah, but we're kids here, aren't we? Trevor Young. Okay, and then if you want to like reset your brush too, you can just go whoop, and now it's back to normal. No, oh, it's not. My bad. Reset. No, it's not back to normal. All right, well, <laughs> turn that off. Still not back to normal. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh well. Zin Zin Zinch Zinch What's that? What the heck is that? I don't know what that is. Your ZBrush 2002 to 2022 years? You've been using it for 20 years. You've been using it from the like pretty much the beginning. Warhammer, got you. Right, right, right. Oh dang, right. That's right. I totally forgot that the theme this month was a tabletop thing I did not participate. Dumb. 
Does interpolate work in a curve, like adding teeth to a mount or is it straight line only? No, interpolate works with like everything. So I can literally go like this, woo, and then like this, woo, and then go stroke, interpolate, and well, okay, that was, that was too much. Let's just say, there we go, interpolate, there we go, see? Easy peasy lemon squeezy, but I'm like a freak that likes to do everything by hand, so even if that would, you know, save me time, I like to just kind of do stuff by hand anyways. Unless I'm really in a pinch. But... Yeah, could be kind of cool. All right, well. Let me put some eyeballs in this guy. Eagle eyeballs are usually kind of on the bottom ish. The bigger, yeah, well, there we go. Okay. Uh, give it a little bit of posing. Whenever dealing with like bugs, always remember you need to give everything housing, <laughs> all their parts. Chris, how are you doing? Monty's good, Reaper. I could turn this into a miniature. Alright. We'll just say it's a miniature. Definitely a miniature.
All right, it'll work on the rest of this. Feel like we need a bigger, yes, bigger. Big boy, big, big boy. With my references um during these streams i usually just kind of freehand sketch just because it's a lot of fun and then i can focus on answering questions and just chilling and vibing without really like creating anything in particular because we're just kind of concepting on the fly we're not really doing anything in particular so i don't really have references up usually on these streams if I like anything that I do, obviously I'll reference and then fix it up with some things afterwards, but it's just sketching, so... Why do designers like to vibrate their legs? Why are you seeing me fucking... <laughs> what are you seeing? Is my is my nest or uh, is my desk turning into an earthquake station? <laughs> I don't know. It just kind of helps me focus. I'm always like, I don't know. I, I have a, I always have a party leg. Well, I appreciate it, Rev. <laughs> I get a party leg when you have to pee? <laughs> Fair. How hard was it to land my first industry job? Um, I'm gonna be annoying and say not super hard. Like, I got pretty lucky by being in the right place at the right time. But I, uh... I mean, I... Like, I, I got a job out of school like not even not even a week later uh from graduation so but i was unable to get an internship earlier on so that was uh that was pretty brutal i think part of that had to do with the fact that i was unwilling to work for free which uh a lot of the internships that were being offered were all for free that was, to me, a big, like, nah, screw this, it's not worth it. But a lot of it, too, was because I was just, for the paid internships, I was just not, I just wasn't good enough for paid internships, so. That was kind of a kick in the butt, it was just like, oh, well, now you gotta, you know, you gotta work a little bit harder. So I worked a little harder and got lucky when I graduated as well. The thing is, like, um... Is a you know I it's not a good thing on somebody somebody tweeted about this on uh, so somebody tweeted about this on Twitter earlier and I agreed with it it was like um, you know if you sit around just kind of like hoping for anything and then when something lucky happens you won't be able to capitalize on that lucky moment whereas if you were working your blood off and like actually like trying to do something and learn and improve yourself then when that lucky thing does happen you're able to capitalize on it right because a lot of it is right place right time but if you don't have the skills when that right place right time shows up then you're not really lucky or is it, you're not really able to capitalize on that lucky moment where they're like hey we need somebody can you be that you give them your portfolio but you haven't really been working on it and you're not up to par then they're like Okay, nah but if that same thing happened and you were really working on it and finally somebody's just like hey we need somebody can i see your portfolio all of a sudden you're capitalizing on that luck right so to say somebody is just only lucky with no work is like not really it's it's a mix of both right like you have to always put a lot of work in regardless of the situation and then you know a lucky thing will show up you just have to keep working and Putting yourself in the same, you know, in as many situations as you possibly can. 
try to grind enough in your corner to pass as a veteran with a, with a portfolio stay so I mean, okay, again, with the grinding, I don't like saying grind or, you know, anything like that because it doesn't, to me, that's like a, like rhetoric is really important when you're talking about things and when you say grind, it kind of insinuates doing the same thing as repetition over and over again in a really like methodic, like just at the grind, oh, blah, 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 like, and there's nothing fun to that. There is nothing engaging. And so I don't like calling it a grind when you're when it's referring to art. I really don't like that. It's kind of negative. Um, the best way to say it is to always be looking at what you're doing and every single time that you do something, learn from that thing and try to do better the next time. Just one thing, just a little thing. Just notice one little thing that you could do better and just keep building on that. Um, and find things that are exciting to you and work on things that are fun and engaging to you. It doesn't have to be a grind. I think that's a, that's a big thing is like a lot of people get burnt out too because they think it has to be a certain way and it just really doesn't. It doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, yeah, I get it. The thing, yeah. So a lot of the time I find people say grind when it comes to art because they are coming from a different industry. Um, for me, I've been fortunate enough that art has like been my paying job since the dawn of needing to pay for myself. <laughs> so I've been really fortunate that way and I don't look at it the same way, I guess, as if I were to come from another industry where you know, you you have to like grind to uh, to get to the top. It's not really quite the same. Art is a little bit unique um, when it comes to what you need to do, and a lot of it really does come down to enjoying what it is that you're doing. Right, but, uh, but Dev, like, if you were to just fill your portfolio with things that you don't like, that's defeating the purpose, in my opinion, because then you're going to get a job that you don't like, right? You're filling, think of your portfolio as your resume. You wouldn't fill your resume with a whole bunch of things that you don't want to do if it's not what you're looking for, right? So if you want to work on... A specific type of character art for like different uh like a, a specific type of game or something like that different a specific type of style you focus yourself on that stuff that you like and put that in your portfolio right of course looking at you know what it is that other people are doing that are in the position that you're looking for but you always want to be doing something that's interesting to you you don't want to just be filling the void you want it to have a purpose, a purpose uh, to what kind of a job position you want, right? And something that's engaging and uh, not just, you know, another environment pillar or, you know, a uh, another orc just because everybody does orcs or something. <laughs> if you like orcs, that's great. I'm just saying, you know, like, who, who are you as an artist is really important. Yeah, sorry. I don't mean to like go off and off, but a lot of the time, um, I just want to. I, I kind of, I kind of feel like I need to drive that home a little bit for some people, not necessarily you yourself, but 
uh, a lot of, I think a lot of new artists really think that they just have to do very specific things and they end up doing things that they don't like. And I think that that's defeating the entire purpose of even becoming an artist. Like why, like, do you want to do stuff that you're putting in your portfolio or do you want to, you know, why, why, why do that if you don't even like it? Of course, with every job, there's aspects of it that you have to do that, you know, you're not going to like. That's not what I'm trying to get at, right? There's always going to be aspects that you're like, you know, it's going to feel a little grindy. But for the most part, you should really enjoy um, enjoy the, the stuff that you're doing as an artist. <laughs> all right they'll right. see you doom use the dream word. all right see you have a good night thanks for hanging out yeah i agree frosty yeah don't worry about speed right off the bat um i've been sculpting for i think seven years now maybe something like seven years so don't worry if you're not like super comfortable with it right off the bat my my first sculpts you know what here guys guys my first sculpts let me show you actually yeah some of my first stuff this is like I mean this this wasn't my um, my first sculpt, but it was one of the uh, earlier ones for sure. So you can see that things have progressed since this point of just pulling stuff around. Everything's all lumpy, you know. I'm just putting colors down willy nilly, like not not knowing what is going on. But I'm still having fun, and that's the really important thing. Is like I'm doing what it is. Like, as soon as I started using ZBrush, I started doing stuff that I liked. I know, it's very funny. It's very funny, right? And it's just an alpha spam. Like, this is such a newbie thing to do, right? Just, like, spam alphas around, thinking that it's making your, your model better, better. But, like, at the same time, like, you can see I'm choosing a subject matter that I find is fun. Like, I like it. And so if you're doing stuff that you like, then you're going to get through uncomfortable learning situations a little bit better and faster um here was another one here's uh here's another here's another one <laughs> very uh very interesting very cool <laughs> and uh and then there's that you know, classic red wax. Very good. Very good work. Yep. But again, like you're just you're I'm doing stuff that I like. Yeah, same thing here. This was uh not very good. I spent a long time on it too. But you can see I was just like I'm trying to wow, I found the radial symmetry. <laughs> You know? So it's just about just walking around, having fun. Figure it out. Look, I started getting into like the uh started I started learning about the mesh stuff, you know? Very cool. Very bad at hard surface at this point. What even is that? But you know, whatever. Doesn't matter if it's bad, it's about if you have fun or not. And then the more that you have fun with what you're doing, the easier it is to learn. 
So you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to stress. Don't stress about speed and all that. It'll all come to you. Oh, for 3D? No, I learned ZBrush in 3D on my own. My school stuff was all 2D animation. Um, so I went to school, yeah, uh, for a bachelor's of animation and everything that I was doing was 2D related. I think I had one class on rigging in 3D and that was, that was it, but we didn't really do anything in that class. <laughs> so all of the 3D that I learned was on my own time. Because I I found like halfway through uh, animation school that I didn't want to be an animator, <laughs> but I still graduated and I still got my animation bachelor. But I didn't want to be an animator, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's where I am. Yeah, I, I mean, like, the the uh, the early stages, I did not know, like I said, like, I learned 3D on my own. School did not help me with 3D. I did not learn any 3D from school. Um, so ZBrush, all of that, it was just from picking it up and messing around with it. But drawing and stuff like that, like, I did go to school for art. Um, most of... So in, in high school, all of my electives were like workshop like um i went to a fine arts uh program for high school but i didn't have any like elective programs or anything like that it was like quite literally everything was just here go and paint and explore and experiment and i started life drawing when i was i mean in a fine arts kind of way like not um it was much more like conceptual like this is like how do you feel and things like that uh, so i did i learned a lot of like acrylic painting and stuff while i was in studio time in high school and um i mean before that too i was drawing a whole bunch on my own but it was all like like i didn't know what structure was or anything like that right um and then after after high school, went to college for 2D animation and was like, nah, 2D animation, not for me. And so then I started after school hours or when something was due, instead I would be doing ZBrush and <laughs> sculpting to procrastinate on my uh, 2D artwork that I had to do. So it is definitely something that you can learn on your own, but yes, I had the art fundamentals down, um, more or less down before I started doing stuff in ZBrush.
Yeah, yeah, the basic, um, anytime that you want to take a break from sculpting, highly recommend just picking up like drawing or painting or something like that. Even if you're not like super good at it, uh, one will complement the other. A lot of the time, like if I don't quite understand something or like I want to study anatomy or gesture, a lot of the time I'll just do it in 2D. If I just like don't really have the patience for sculpting at that moment, I'll quite literally just like draw a whole bunch of arms or something like that. What was my weirdest art class? Oh my god, high school um, life drawing was was something. It was something. Um, some of the painting classes too. Some of these people, like we were in high school, and some of the conceptual stuff was some some people were doing some questionable things. Questionable, very questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did live models in high school, uh, naked, fully naked, and one of the models, I still remember this day, oh my god, okay, 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 not exactly, I'll try and keep it as family friendly as possible. Um, so obviously when this started, we were not, we were told, yay, hey, no, no laughing, nothing like that, right, we're, we're young, like, we were in grade... It, my, yeah it was great no it was grade nine my first life drawing class i think was in grade nine but then we started really doing it in grade 10 grade nine we were young okay um oh man we were doing it with charcoal or it was either like charcoal or pastels i can't remember um and the model we had was a dude i'm not gonna say like names or anything because i don't want to like anyways uh i ended up having the same model too in in college which is really funny <laughs> anyways um we <laughs> oh frig it was so hard not to laugh i'm still laughing because i'm imagining it i don't want to imagine it uh the one of my classmates who was sitting right in front of me so it was like two rows it was two rows of uh seating and everybody had like their their stencil their stencil sheets their stencil boards up or whatever you want to call them everybody was getting ready and we were all like oh my god it's our first naked person <laughs> we we're all like ah it's our first naked person and um and this dude just like gets up on the podium derobes in the most dramatic way possible most dramatic way possible okay i whatever and already i was just like everybody you can imagine what everybody was fixated on everyone um <laughs> and almost like not even two minutes into drawing the first like our first like one minute poses not even not even two minutes in this girl drops her charcoal it rolls all the way to the base of the podium and then starts rolling back and this guy breaks his pose gets down on all four <laughs> all fours and just crawls over to her and is having a hard time picking it up turns around full moon and then st stands up and then turns around and gives it to her this was my first like, <laughs> I can't get it down. I, like it was just I, I don't know I was oh the tears like I I, I wasn't laughing I was just mm. <laughs> like what's that what is that meme like of like that dude that's holding his breath you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was good it was good it was a good first impression I don't know. The 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 models we had after that were pretty normal. <laughs> they were pretty normal. <laughs> oh. Yeah, way too much life. Way too much life in that. Way too much life. <sighs> My drawings were so bad. Everybody's drawings were so bad. Oh my god. We were so bad. But also, like, in high school- oh man, we didn't- we weren't really taught, like, proper life drawing either. Like, 
It was just sort of like, here you go, go draw, draw, like, eat your line of action. Oh, just whatever. I When I really, like, as much life drawing as I was doing in high school, like, I really started to actually learn life drawing when I went to college and it was, like, actually serious, serious, because... I think everything was more about like getting emotions and feeling when I was in high school for like um, fine art stuff. Whereas if when I was uh, at uh, college, everything was a lot more structured, you know, and everything had a little bit more like technicality, like a technical purpose. I think still one of the things that I absolutely despised the most was the longer extended sessions in high school of just like sitting there with pastels, having to drawn like this dingy like barely lit room everybody's dead silent you're not allowed to talk or listen to music i was having such a hard time with that i just kind of like made marks with different colors where things are supposed to be and then like at lunchtime i would take out my massive thing put it on the cafeteria table sit on the table and just scribble <laughs> Pastels, like a weird. Our school was so weird. Wow, I, these are unlocking core memories for me. <laughs> Just like at lunchtime in the cafeteria, scribbling like a naked person in pastels. Uh. Okay. <laughs> My A level art class, we didn't do life drawing. Oh, geez, yeah. Oil paint is not something you should have on your skin. You should not be inhaling that. I um, I specifically avoided oil paints because of the uh, the cancer it can give. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really hard to <laughs> it's really hard to to draw while you're holding back your laughter for sure. Um, and crying, crying doesn't help anything either. What other programs do you use alongside ZBrush to present your artworks? A lot of the time I will send this with the Keyshot bridge over to Keyshot. I'll send it over to Keyshot. I'll render it in a whole bunch of different passes, composite in Photoshop, and do whatever paint overs I need to kind of achieve a specific look or feel that I can then send to client you know that whole shtick but i uh if it's for like a like an actual full production model a lot of the time i will go through substance painter and maya as well um how long to get used to zbrush it's overwhelming uh yeah it really depends on what your idea of getting used to it is because it has a lot of tools and you will be learning stuff for a long time but in terms of navigation i find if you just like use it for a week straight it's pretty good for um getting the overall hang of basic navigation as long as you're not like bogging yourself down with too much stuff but you'd have to really be uh be on top of it the learning curve is a little bit steep Worth it though if you if you can get yourself past that point. Definitely worth it. Um Dallas, not not yet. Not yet, I have not. Frosty, we all were though. Every single one of us. Well, actually, some of some of the some of the people, some of the some of my classmates, I remember like their faces were like more horrified than anything. I think uh, there was either you were either horrified <laughs> or you were like you you were struggling. Um. Yeah, Dallas, that's very much, like, the same experience that I had with my fine arts thing. Like, my teacher, like, as much as I liked one of my teachers that I had, she, uh, she would critique things by, ta like, taking, being like, can I have your paintbrush for a second? And then she would, like, 
she would like lick my paintbrush with her like she had like this bright red lipstick she she would lick it get lipstick all over her hands too and then she would like start making marks on my canvas sometimes be like do you think that that would be better like it wasn't like a direct like hey this is what you have to do to make it better it's just like a do you think that that would be better it might be right like you gotta think like you gotta think you gotta think and then you know like she would just like like smear her lipstick over my stuff and other people's people's work too and you're just like great now i have to read gesso my canvas because her lipstick i can't get it off <laughs> <laughs> But she was nice. She also told me that I wasn't living up to my potential. <laughs> she called me into her office before I graduated and she just ripped, she just ripped into me. She just absolutely ripped into me. She was just like, you're not living up to your potential. You think life is a joke. You're not going to get through anything. You're, you're leaving everything to the last minute. You could do so much better. She just like ripped into me and I was like, Thanks. <laughs> but he was nice. No, she she was great. I liked her a lot. All right, see you, Reth. Have a great night. I'm projecting hard. Uh, she actually, uh, she she retired the same year that I graduated. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe projection. <laughs> it's okay. I could take it. She wasn't the first one. See, that's funny because like <laughs> I like all of this stuff I completely forgot about it like I completely forget about all of this kind of stuff until we start talking about it like this it unlocks all these core memories like I don't I honestly I don't do art out of spite I don't succeed out of spite I just literally do stuff because I like doing it and if I don't like doing it I don't want to do it uh, so if I wasn't, if I was leaving stuff to the last minute, because I did not like it, I did not like it, and I did not want to do it. <laughs> I am a simple girl. <laughs> like, I will forget. I will forget pretty quickly. what's up jack try to forget everything you learned once you graduated yeah yeah that was the same thing when i went to animation school
Would you say it's worth it to learn ZBrush, kind of like a geometry node system? Um, yeah, I, so if you're looking to be like a character artist or really like get into the industry of the uh, 3D printables, um, etc., even jewelry stuff, I would say ZBrush is definitely worth it. Uh, like, I mean, you can get by with Blender, but it's kind of like... If you had a ballpoint pen, the choice between a ballpoint pen and a really nice set of fine liners that you would get from an art store, you know, like you can you can do pretty good stuff with the ballpoint, don't get me wrong, but there's like this other tool set that you can use that might make things better and easier for you. So I would say yes. What's up, Mark? Was good. How goes it? That's looking so incredibly symmetrical. I need to do something with this. Uh, with these shapes. Is Monty sleeping? Yes. Yes, he is. I guess I could go to uh, the bathroom and then show you Monty since you keep asking. <laughs> Just keep asking. Everybody wants to see the monitors.
sec. I will look at chat in a second. And just hide all of that nonsense. It ain't working. Oh. Funky music. What's up, Dave? Yeah, you just use masking. Uh, masking, super powerful. It's mask and move. You could literally make entire sculpt space off of just masking and moving stuff. Of course, it's not as clean as it could be, but that's fine. You're just, uh... You're just kind of creating, um sketch stuff.
to make sure that I'm getting like some actual volume under here because this is just weird looking. Um, can you drop the link of the mix that I'm listening to right now? Uh, it's something on Pretzel Rocks. I'm using a free account, so it's one of it's one of the stations on Pretzel Rocks. I don't know which one it is. I think it's like something like house music or chill, chill EDM, chill house, something like that. Yeah, it's chill EDM. There you go. What brushes I use one I have them all on my one through zero keys. So um, my main ones are Clay Buildup, Damien Standard, H Polish, uh, Snake Hook, Inflate, Pinch, Macup Met Gay, which is uh, free to download if you search Google for it. It's kind of hard to find though because it's an older brush. It's, you can just use Damien Standard and Pinch if you really want. Um, and Slash Two, which you can get through the Lightbox menu in the brush palette. I know I said I was going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Let me save. Let me save. I have not saved at all. <laughs> Living on the edge.
take a quick bathroom break and then I'll be back and uh, show you guys some Montes and then I'll finish this up or get as far as we're gonna get anyways <laughs> so take a break and uh, and I'll be back
Here's Monty. Um. Oh, pretzel, pretzel, got you. <laughs> she was wondering what you were talking about now. <laughs> yes, I did. I went to the bathroom because these are like four hours long. It's important to be taking breaks. A lot of the time, I drink a lot of water and a lot of uh, tea while I'm streaming just so that I don't get like a bad voice. So, <laughs> look at this boy. He wants to jump on this bug with a grenade? Oh! <laughs> yes. There we go. It's very hot, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not gonna hold you for too long. He is roasting. He's not, like, it's not actually that hot. He's just hot boy. Hot, hot, hot. Get the AC going for you. Look at this. Look. Look at this. Look at this booty. He's so jiggly! Oh, he's like that. Good boy. Oh, boo boo boo. Boy boo boo. He's a very hot dog. He's a very, very hot dog. Alright, we're gonna get back to this. <laughs> you get like a Monty cam. You need like a whole secondary setup for that. Uh... Alright. Back to business. Let's actually do something here. Typically, where I would put that. I want it to be. Uh... You know what? gonna have it uh, straight down like that. nonsense over here. Delete hidden. And I am most definitely going to delete all of this spikiness. Don't like that. A different shape here. Sometimes it's best to just delete something if it's just not working. No point in sculpting over top of it. It'll just waste your time. Just delete it.
this guy. Oh, Monty's eating his foods. If you hear any uh, Frenchies, that's Monty boy. Something much longer, like that. Yes. Okay, now I gotta figure this area out right here. It would be kind of cool actually, like what if it's um... <laughs> what if it's a drivable beetle? What tablet am I using? I am using a Cintiq, uh, a Wacom Cintiq 22 HD. It's not the newer model one, it is one of the older ones. You don't need a, uh, a Cintiq in order to do this. You can get any old tablet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make this like a like a rideable cockpit type thing. Please tell me one thing. How do you keep sharp edges while remeshing down the poly count? Um, I'm actually not reducing the amount of polys that I have. I'm just dynameshing, and dynamesh actually will try to preserve the uh, the amount of geometry or the amount of details that you have. So um, I'm working low res and then working up from there. If you dynamesh at different resolutions, it will give you different results depending on how big your model is within the document size or the document like scene scene the document that's some interesting terminology
Thanks, Sergio. How how are you doing? That is so high pitched. No, thank you. I'm doing good, also. Spasky, it's chilling. Hey Jacket, how are you? Yeah, gamer. Um, it's a, uh, it's ZBrush. We are on Pixlogic, Max on ZBrush, uh, their official channel right now. So everything here is uh, ZBrush related. about this thing. I'm gonna try something else. I really like feeling this horn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see? That's kind of like that. A little bit better. feels cooler. Techless from Fantasy Battles. Nice. I've no I actually have no idea what that is. But it's good that you're sculpting. I'm sure you'll tell me. <laughs> Hey Atlas, how's it going?
don't want all of this competing. So I'm just kind of seeing if I can these can go sideways. It's competing with that. Like I'm getting a, a crisscross and it ruins the flow of the design. So I'm just kind of trying to figure like what can I do here? This. What's up, Gnome? How are you doing? An elf demigod beetle. <laughs> Let's make some. So sometimes, like with beetle wings, like I could just like grab an image and then um, just do an alpha kind of like an alpha, create something from an alpha. But I'm gonna do it like this this time. Hi, Jan. How are you doing? Because a lot of the time, like if you're doing something like a like a wing, it's very easy to just grab a bug wing and um, deal with it with from an alpha. I'm just gonna do this. Uh, can I get? Let's see. Dynamesh that. Oh, dynameshing too high res. Whoa, went to six mil. Okay, lower res. <laughs> All right. Then we can do like first housing area. Thing here. Are you doing that for what are we, what are you doing that for doing? Um, I'm just having fun. This is just like a sketchbook session. I just kind of like chill and sculpt whatever the heck I want to and answer questions. So, if you have any questions or you just want to like work alongside with some, I don't know if you can hear the music in the background. Some people say that they can't for some like whatever reason, but just like tunes and questions and chilling. Sketching.
Yeah, I'm just chilling, working on whatever. Do it like this. And right here. You can just dynamash this and then here. Give me the overall shape that I need. Do not care. You're still half a trunk? Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I'm, uh, basically, we're just having fun. I am, like, I'm not doing anything in particular, not doing anything. This is not for anything. This is just for fun, just sketching, just because I want to. <laughs> and if you have any questions, that's sort of what this is for. It's like answering questions. Chillin'. Vibin'. the beetle and remembered that for about a year I did not finish work where you were making the beetle. Yeah, you gotta make the beetle, man. Finish the beetle. Go finish your beetle. Beetle sculpting is so much fun. It's so relaxing. I saw the scariest looking weevil on Twitter. I love this account, by the way. Here. Let me find it. Look at this. Look at this weevil. Uh, look at this weevil. Isn't it horrifying? Like, in the best way possible? It's great, right? I love this. This, this person's account is awesome. They couch C-N-E-S-T-U-S. -S. <laughs> Ripped all the beats. They do really good, um, kind of like odd photography of like beetles and stuff like like these little tiny guys you know these little little tinies they're so fun i love these okay it's it's not just me right like these are actually th this is cute right like it's not my friend was saying that i'm like this is not cute like this is definitely cute like look at this guy how is that not adorable like, that's adorable. It's so cute. So. Yeah, I really like this person's account. Look at that. So fun. 
I love bugs. They're so much. They're so cool. Wow. Whoa. I didn't see this one. Look at all the mites on this. Oh my. Yo. Wow, I love this one. That's so cool. More mites. Mmm, good stuff. Look at the legs! Wow. Anyways, I really like this account. It's cool. Uh, cool account. Go follow. Okay, done. You hate spiders. Man, I feel like spiders get way more hate than they deserve. They do so much good for this for this world. They get rid of like so many other pests. There was a spider on my window sill in uh here here in Montreal, the spiders are um they come out in in like these waves like there's so many spiders orb web weavers specifically and there's just spider webs everywhere all the time right and i was setting up my ac so i had to clear out some uh some mommy spiders who were pregnant as all heck dude they were so incredibly pregnant they could barely move so it was easy to just pick them up and like relocate them but yeah they were very very pregnant spiders yeah you have a pet spider i keep like so, <laughs> I keep saying I want a pet tarantula, but then I'm also like, if I ever go anywhere, I don't know anyone who would be comfortable taking care of my pet tarantula. So that's like, that and like, I don't think, I don't think my, uh, my partner would be too happy about a pet tarantula either, so I'm just not getting a pet tarantula, but I think that, that would be a pretty cool pet to have, pet tarantula. I've got I've got Monty. And he's a he's a very socially awkward dog, but still a dog, so more socially acceptable to have, I guess. Nah, Monty's pretty good. Um well, no, okay. No, actually he does. He tries to eat the spiders all the time. He likes chasing spiders and eating them. Not good. Try and get him to not eat the spiders. Yeah. Yeah, there was a few uh, super pregnant spiders that I picked up and um, relocated so that they could have their babies somewhere else <laughs> and not infest my room. I absolutely freaked out though. Like, as, as much as I'm okay with spiders and stuff, if they. If they fall on me without consent, I'm not okay with it. Like any- like I mean like anything touching me without like just out of nowhere freaks me out. So there's been a few times where I have my- my lights off. I'll be working on my Cintiq and all of a sudden there's a spider. Like it just- spider. I'm like, it's done, man. 
<laughs> like, I'm fine with them. I'll pick them up and everything. But if they just, like, show up, jump scare me like that. Goliath spiders. See, I start having issues when I can see the butts pulsing. You know, like, if any part of a bug is, like, pulsing, like, juicy and, like, pulsing like that, like, I... I don't want to touch- like, I love looking at it, right? I don't want to- I don't want to touch that. Like, if it's big enough that it's just, like, doing this, like, I don't want to- I don't want to- I don't want to touch- I don't want to touch- I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. Like, I'll look at it and I think it's really cool and I'll want to, like, sculpt it and stuff like that, but, like, I don't- I don't want- I don't want to- I don't want to touch that. Nah. I'll pass on that. This <laughs> is <Sorry. laughs> But the thing is, right, like, these spiders, like, I'm talking, like, they're, like, they, they've got the big butts, but it's not, like, so if it's got the big butt, right, like, it's fine. Like, I think b the big butt bugs are fine if they're not, like, if they don't actually have, like, this really intense spec on them. You know, like, so, like, when I'm talking, like, big butt, like, a tarantula big butt, like, that's fine. Like, I've handled a, a like, a tarantula before, like, it got these really big butts. But if it's, like, if it's, like, translucent, and you can see its organs, and it's got, like, that really, like, really tight speck on it, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, it's just, like, you can see all the little details, and it looks like... It looks like it would be like slimy or something and then it's just is doing this like that that's like kind of like I like I am like I don't know about that you know like I just I really don't know about that that's a little much that's like I can't do maggots like big mature maggots I can't I I can't do maggots I can't do that no Everything else is cool. Like, that's cool. Like, I like bugs. <laughs> Maggots, Ma though. I don't know, man. I think, I think the reason is because one time um, I used to live by a pond and they were clearing out, uh, they were clearing out the water. They were doing like a refresh or something like that there was like some contaminant so they drained the pond and all of the fish ended up just washing up on shore that lived there and just they did the, the city i guess didn't want to clean up the fish so they were all just decomposing on the the side of the pond that was cleared out and as a kid i was just kind of like exploring the newly um dewatered pond i guess you can say and I found a bunch of fish, and naturally, taking a stick, I wanted to flip them over. Big mistake. Big mistake. I was too close to the fish, flipping them over with the stick. There's so many maggots. And I just, I think that was the moment that I just couldn't, like, it just, the, the fish looked fine. And then you flipped it over, and it was just liquid. It was just, it was just goo and maggots. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do, I couldn't do it. I just can't. <laughs> that was it for me, for maggots.
Oh yeah, if you're eating right now, I don't know, man. Uh, sorry, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a... <laughs> now you guys know my fear of maggots. Yo, she's, she loves bugs, but for some reason maggots... I'm just... The amount of time I'm saying maggots, how... Why, why are you guys still here? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna stop, I'm sorry. Dang it, that's too high res. Stop doing that. Too high res. Can I do some I mean, dude, okay. Have you ever actually seen like you know what? Yeah, if you left if you left your garbage for too long, I'm sure at some point you know exactly what I'm talking about. They maggots are pro at liquefying everything. That's what they do. That's like their thing is they liquefy. They liquefy solids. You're also a maniac of detailing during sculpting. Are there any more like this? A lot of people love the detailing phase. Um, I get pretty distracted during the detailing phase, personally. Actually, no. Uh, I'm gonna save real quick. Yep. The fly? Yeah. Oh, hello? Gonna whatever. I'll merge this down now. Okay. Let me just.
Uh, micro sculpture, yes. Yeah, I, there's there's like a lot of um, there's a lot of really good resources out there. Just really bad at remembering the names of everything. I'm going to move that upwards. One room. And that can move in. That. I think I want to keep this more rounding shape instead of doing everything. Biotransformers, so cool and beautiful. I agree. Actually, something that's really awesome about beetles um, when they're opening their backs, the you would think that, that it kind of like moves on one axis, like when it's going like this to open, but they're actually kind of a little bit more freeform. Um, a lot of them, it actually kind of sits on like this like spongy uh, bio kind of like spring like material so when it's opening it actually can go in a whole bunch of different directions the chases I guess you can call it and then the wings actually uncrumple themselves and then go outwards and then when it comes back in when you see them land their wings are still out and slowly they start to recrumple themselves when they go into the actual chases so it's actually a lot more um, free when you are uh, I guess Creating, uh, creating how they open, making sure that it has uh, enough room to do all of that. Thanks, HE! Yeah, studying macro photography is actually super, super um, useful and fun. Very, very fun to do. Um, this guy, I think I'm going to give him some, uh, some fiber mesh here. Oh, hey, Sophie, how are you doing? Welcome. Welcome aboard the weird train. What's up? How's it going? Didn't expect to see you here. Fancy seeing you here. Yeah, it's all it correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that book is um everything has like the back backgrounds, it's like full page spreads and stuff. I think there's also a website for it too, if I'm correct about that. Um it's also uh cool to mention that there is the National Geographic photo arc as well. It's not necessarily like macro photography, but it's actually really, really cool what he's doing with um just uh, taking really, really good photos of pretty much every species that he can get his hands on for a uh, 
or shoot and it's it's like in the same style with like the really clean background it's just showcasing the actual animal which is really nice hey nice yeah i'm gonna be going for like 45 more minutes so i won't subject you to a night of torture and talking about maggots because that's exactly what we were just doing uh what was i doing again i was gonna give this fiber mesh right okay review all right so let's do Oop. all right do we want to make him a fuzzy wuzzy? Uh, give it more segments. Uh, we can give it, where's its gravity? We can turn that down to zero so it just sticks out. Nice. And then the coverage, we'll make it nice and chunky. Chunky, chunky. Very good. Less fibers. And then we'll supplement that. We can say accept. Um, previews. And we will do. Wait, no, not on that. This one, we'll preview. We'll do less coverage on this one, more fibers. Uh, like so. And longer. Where's the length? Less fibers. There we go. Except. Go. Now, make sure that none of this intersects. I'm going to get it to you know, merge that down with the other one. This one, this one. Finished everything, made a beetle. Break for a couple months and then study how to make hair in different programs. Ooh, fancy. Gotta get you them hyper real beetles. Me, I'm good with fiber mesh for my uh, for my sketches, especially since this would only be for like specific angle renders. I don't need to worry about all the extreme intersections or anything. Oh, I'm using Dini's standard play. Yeah. Am I Brazilian? No, I'm not Brazilian. I'm just a Canadian gal. Thanks, Rebellious. Uh, do you have any suggestions for reference material to study for hard surface design? Perhaps something outside of the typical norms? So you know what's actually interesting about that? Uh, when it comes to hard surface stuff, 
you will actually find a lot of use out of studying ordinary things that are on your desk that maybe you might think are easy to model, but they'll give you some interesting technical challenges. Um, for example, like if I were to just pick up this spray bottle, right? And you want to, then if you start like trying to replicate something like this, like this is hard surface, if you wanted to replicate something like this, it's a, it's a great way to practice things and trying to get all of these specific like specs like the specific uh, hits of light on this, you know, different plane changes and things, and then actually, uh, you know, giving it proper topology as well on top of that. That's a good modeling exercise too. So just stuff that lays around on your desk. Um, a lot of it is perfect to work from. Yeah, hair dryers, hair dryers are great. Great, <laughs> great hard surface practice not even i'm not even joking like you'll get some booleans going on in there you're gonna get some um good curves uh like curved surfaces to hard like flat surfaces and the transition of topology towards that to make it actually work it's a very tricky thing to get a cylinder to uh to work well with a sort of like rectangular shape afterwards right like that that curve side all the way to a flat side what does that transition look like and actually making that work and then all of those skills you can quite literally just like transfer around anyways afterwards so would zbrush be good for that i do a lot of my hard surface stuff in zbrush yeah it really just depends on how comfortable you are with working in zbrush Yeah, um, there's also a lot of other artists on this channel that are much more dedicated to showing off hard surface than somebody like me. I usually don't stream a lot of hard surface just because like my initial stages of hard surface design is usually quite similar to what I do for organic sketching. However, the cleanup stage is usually a multi, multi-day process, whereas doing um organic stuff i can just kind of leave it messy and you get the idea but doing hard surface and cleaning up everything is pretty tedious so i don't really like to do that too much on stream so it takes like so much time and you don't get to see like really a final result unless i were to take multiple streams over and over again that's just not me either right like i like to jump from thing to thing so um check out the other artists on this channel there's probably some more people that can uh, help you out with that specific stuff I'm not like a, an expert by any means. I just do kind of what works for the sketching that I need to do. Uh, okay, now let's get this to actually work. Posing here. Add a render render engine to it's like Octane Render would be cool if it's working with materials. Um yeah, so Maxon already has a CAD Cinema 4D, not CAD, my bad. Cinema 4D, which is also C4 anyways. Always mix it up with CAD, but it's Cinema 4D. Um so Cinema 4D actually has their own render within it as well. Uh, you can try that workflow for you if you want. Um, one thing that I like working with is the Keyshot bridge, and it just like sends everything from ZBrush right over to Keyshot, and I can start working from there. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Getting rid of wobbly hard surface is hard. So if you're if you're kind of like me and you want to do stuff a little bit faster, I can give you a couple of tricks. Again, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna work low res, right? Um, with everything that you do initially 
So the lower the resolution, the better. So if you were blocking things out, like let's say, uh, you know, let's just take this for example. Let's go here and dynamesh or z remesh this a whole bunch to half resolution. Half it, just keep halving it. Half, half. We get something pretty low res here, right? And then, you know, let's say I wanted my shape to be something um, more like this. This is what I wanted my shape to be. Great. Z remesh that. Uh, take half off. Let's do same. Z remesh. Boom. Now that's clean. All that a little bit. Dynamic subdiv. Right. Now you can take some of your brushes, kind of just pinch some edges, like so. So this is not like final topology, but it keeps it, working with things low res, it keeps it pretty clean, right? And you can still get your shapes going. Um, and then obviously if you wanted to like, you know, start adding in edge loops to help things. You can also go into Z modeler. Oops, let's go down Z modeler. And then uh, I have insert here, right? So if you click on, right click on a edge and then say insert, which I'll turn off dynamic just so I can see what I'm doing. You insert something, you know, you'd have to actually be working with actual topology, but if you insert an edge to any of this stuff, you're going to start getting hard surfaces on those areas too, but you don't necessarily need to insert. You can also do this thing called uh, blah, 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 crease, crease edge, and then you can kind of go along on certain edges that you want to keep sharp, right? There you go. Now you have like this super, super sharp edge right here. You're keeping it pretty low res. And the great thing about like creasing stuff too is it kind of helps control topology if you are going to do a Z remesh, say detect edges, um, same keep creases and Z remesh, right? And now it's following proper topology. You know, you've got a, well, not proper, not fully proper, but you've got something a little bit better, right? It's kind of like a lot smoother, easier to work with. Um, so that's how you would keep things pretty, uh, pretty clean as you're going. But if you're a little bit messier, like this is, this to me is like stage two, right? Like I wouldn't, I really wouldn't be designing this way a lot of the time. Um, when I'm just kind of like getting in messy with stuff, usually I'll do something, you know, just to get ideas. I'll just take whatever I have, which is like the sphere, right? And I'll just kind of like start, you know, designing the shapes that I want. Like overall, let's say it's uh, something, something more like this for whatever reason, right? Dynamash that. Say this is, this is kind of like the shape that I want. Okay. And then I'll just kind of start going over top and doing bigger strokes to keep stuff more or less hard sur oops, hard surface. I usually don't start sculpting on top like that or anything, um, just for specific areas, just to make sure I get stuff, because then you don't want to be constantly smoothing, right? Like, like that's the big thing, you don't want to constantly be smoothing, doing big strokes, keep it pretty, uh, what's the word, um, loose, big strokes. And then you can get like kind of a, a thing going here as well. So another thing too is the pinch brush. Here's another one. You take the pinch brush and you kind of just go on certain areas. Then what it does is it stretches all the topology in that area, right? Take the smooth brush, smooth it out. And then the H polish. Now you've got like this super, super hard smooth edge. There's also other brushes that you can use too to help you out with this kind of stuff. Um, it's like, you know, you've got bevel flat, so you, you, you start working with it like this, you draw it out on any kind of a surface, and then now you can get like this really, 
flat edge depending on where you're drawing it from, right? You can bevel. Personally, I'm not very good at using this tool right here. It's not my favorite. It Maybe if you're a little bit more technical than I am, but I like to really get in and sculpt what it is that I'm doing. But there is this brush here for you and same with like bevel arc, you know, you can get, you can just draw it out and it follows the arc, which is very nice like if you need that. So there's a lot of tools within ZBrush and I'm only scratching the surface of it to help you with hard surface stuff. Um, but I, I usually don't do hard surface on this channel just because it's like the, the cleanup phase, it does take a lot and it's not exactly super fun to watch for most people. So hopefully that helped. re a hard surface model 10 hour ASMR stream oh my god a lot of the things too that I would be doing is like probably too complex for even just 10 hours or probably take even longer than that for being real oh yeah 24 hour stream eyes bleeding re apologizing <laughs> hard surface though have you seen um actually um the chaos masons have their own uh, twitch channel too sometimes they go live, like Marco goes live, and he's doing like cleanup of some of his models. It's multi-session, right? Like he's got like hyper detailed sculpts um, and a lot of stuff that he does is hard surface. So if you want to check anything else like that out, uh, check out the Chaos Masons. They have like their own, their own thing. But it's like essentially that's like what they do is essentially the same thing as what I do. It's very much like an organic approach to uh, reach apologizing and hard surface. Like I, I hate, I hate box modeling. I hate it. Um, I lose focus really fast. Like I would rather get my hands on it, feel a little bit more tactical, which ZBrush lets me do, than um, have to go box modeling. I'll do it if I have to, but I'd rather not. Oh yeah, topology is way easier than it used to be. For sure. But it's still, like, it still can be time consuming. Jeremy, actually, my job is stylized art. Um, right now I'm working, well, I just finished working on something for like blue sky kind of um uh sand like r d for like a preschool show mm. don't know if it's gonna get approved or not i don't know but i did work for some preschool stuff recently um and a lot of the stuff that i do is uh this is a very annoying very annoying very annoying music sorry so a lot of the stuff that i do is um stylized for work. But I like uh, I like dipping my toes into like pretty much everything that I can. I I get pretty bored of one thing pretty quickly. Like I will right now I'm on a beetle kick and a bug kick. I'll probably do like a whole bunch of like beetles and crustaceans over and over and over again and then I'll be like okay What's next now? What's new? And then I'll move on to whatever fascination I have. 
after that. Like, I just don't like uh, sticking around with, like, one thing for extended periods of time. Gotta get that range, you know? <laughs> Was it for Baby Shark? No. Sir. What's up, Julian? Oh, first job you had to box model rock cliffs? <laughs> oh, that sucks to suck, dude. Box model. Oh. Wait, I think I know exactly what you're talking about, too. I'm sorry. That probably was soul sucking. <laughs> hey, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. I've had my fair share of, uh,. Of box modeling that I've had to do for work as well. But now, now I feel free. At least a lot more free. What's up, Hattori? Um, made it. Yeah, okay, answered all that. Yeah, also, in terms of the stylized art thing, um, some- here, I'll just, like, the only stuff that I can announce- like, read that's been announced, like, again, I work on a lot of R&D stuff that will never see the light of day, which is really annoying, R and, like, NDA-related. <laughs> like, I'm in a perpetual NDA with, like, my R&D stuff. But the stuff that actually has come out or has been announced, um, I can tell you. So my first project was Barbie Starlight Adventure. Very cool. Um, the second one was Disney's Elena of Avalor. Very cool. And then my third one was Next Gen, the movie that you can watch on, on Netflix. I got to do, that was my first like concept sculpting job. So that was cool. Uh, and then I did a tale dark and grim. I did a lot of concept sculpting for that. Not the final models, but concept sculpting. And then I also worked a bit, just a little bit, on Magic the Gathering, uh, the Netflix animated series that's supposed to come out at some point. They announced it, so I can say that. But everything else is in NDA, perpetual NDA. I'll never be able to, <laughs> never be able to tell you. So all- so you can see, all that is stylized, right? Hey, Angelus. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's do some detailing here. Um some fun with some brushes. What do we got here? Some of the, uh, no, we're gonna keep this, we're gonna keep this, um, we're gonna keep this vanilla. I'm not gonna go into that. I'm gonna keep it vanilla. So, we're gonna keep it vanilla. Oh. 
Okay, I well I was gonna make like a quick alpha, but whatever. I'll just do it this way. Okay, that's fine. Oh shit. Uh such it no, it's good. More stroke, let's do one. Don't you do topology, then the detailing? If I'm doing it for um, production, a lot of the time, yeah. If I'm doing a, like a production model. Um, it really depends on what it is that I'm working on. Like if it's just a sketch, like keep in mind a lot of what I'm doing um, here on the stream is just sketching, just for fun. So I don't need to worry about topology, especially since a lot of this is just gonna be for render. Um, a lot of what I do these days is illustration or pitching different kinds of shows or character design. Um, it's just really just sketching stuff fast in 3D. I use 3D as a base for a lot of my illustration stuff as well, just because it's faster. Like I don't have to paint all of the light from scratch, etc. And I get to play around with cool camera angles and all that kind of stuff. All that fun stuff, right? So... When you do that, you don't really need to worry about topology because you can just like go right into Keyshot and render stuff out. That's an annoying song, I don't like this. What's up, Ben Wolf? Most likely be a watchman at school or a loader. I mean, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do and get just to get by. There's nothing wrong with not getting an art job right off the bat. Like, I mean, it sucks, right? Like, you want, you want to get your dream job. But I would say it's w more worth it just to make sure that you're getting enough money to kind of survive than it is to just ensure that you get a job, you know, that might be paying you way less than you deserve and you can barely make rent i mean in the vfx industry i know a lot of comp artists um this is a big problem by the way a lot of comp artists they uh they rely on the overtime to actually prove that they're making more money than they really are and a lot of studios are saying yeah, no, you're not going to do overtime anymore. And now, now they can't really find a place to 
rent and slash like they can't get a mortgage on a house etc because they're extremely underpaid uh you know on their on their actual salary which it's like the the industry itself is like completely completely borked for salaries and they're gonna try and take advantage of you as a junior getting in too so um it's better to just make make what you need at the job that you have than uh, suffer in the art industry and then end up hating it, in my opinion. Uh, it's, it's going, you know. I'm getting by. Getting by today. Looking forward to working out as soon as this is done. Finally got some weights. Eric was able to get some weights. I am bumming off of him. Can be big and strong. <laughs> not really. This sort of a uh, not in shoulder pain anymore. Hopefully, <laughs> need more more shoulder muscles. Always complaining about my shoulder muscles. Yeah, the thing is, right, like, you need a certain amount of money for for you to just, like, not completely hate what it is that you're doing. Like, as long as you can get by, I think that's important. But a lot of the times, like, junior salaries are pretty bad. Like, pretty bad, especially if you're, like, you're in the city and you're not allowed to work remote. Um, like, think about this. Like, a lot of... <laughs> A lot of salaries that I've heard for juniors can be as low as uh, 35k, 40k, and that's Canadian. And that's really, really bad when you're inside of the city and rent alone every single month can be like a thousand for a bachelor apartment. I mean, you, you could get lucky and find a place for like... 800 or something like that but if you're in the city and you need a place even a bachelor apartment is like a thousand a month plus like the food and inflation and all of that it's like absolutely insane so really you're plus taxes on top of the uh of that 35 or 40 thousand a year salary it's like it's like what are you doing you know like you might as well at that point wait for a better opportunity get a different job that will pay maybe better and gives you benefits in the meantime even if it's not related and then try again later when things are easier and better instead of suffering and then ending up hating what it is that you do that's my opinion you don't need to rush into anything you can always do art on your own time i know how much of like a dream it is to work on movies and things like that but it's not a lot of people find it's maybe not as much of a dream, like the rose-colored glasses come off when you're doing so much overtime or you're not being paid enough and you can barely get by. You know, like there's this romanticized idea of the starving artist. It's not, it's not like what, you know, people make it out to be. It's not great. Everybody needs their basic needs met. So, you know, look out for yourself first and foremost and don't like try and force yourself into like an industry that is completely based on your own passion as well so if it strips away your passion at the very beginning then you're you're kind of destroying your own dream like there is a chance of that happening i'm not saying that that's going to happen there is an absolute chance of that happening if you're putting yourself in a position where you're you're getting a, a underpaying job that's going to overwork you you know, and it's requiring you to put everything and all your passion into it, you're just gonna burn out. So, 
keep an open mind. Don't be ashamed if you can't get an art job right away or it doesn't look good or you're getting red flags, it's fine. It's fine and completely normal. Just keep working on your own art when you have the opportunity to keep building your portfolio and eventually you're gonna get a better opportunity when the time comes, right? Just work, focus on you, focus on your life, make sure that it's working and you can eat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, Sophie. Yeah, I call it the, um, I, I like to call it the junior meat grinder. Like, VFX is, they've got a junior meat grinder going, and a lot of schools, like, they turn out students at a ridiculous rate. Like, there's so many schools now, and a lot of them are kind of, like, questionable. <laughs> like, a lot of their, their um, teachers have never worked in the industry or something like that, and they're just churning out grads after grads, so, like, there's kind of a, uh, a system going where, you know, you're just gonna get flung out of school, you're gonna get into whatever job you possibly can in the VFX industry, and they're just gonna churn you, just get you working 60, 80 hour work weeks, and you know, crunch is totally normal, guys. Like this is this is what you love, right? You want to work in the industry, you better do your you better do your time. But nobody really talks about how that <laughs> that really affects your passion for what it is that you do. You know, there's a lot of like talks. There's a lot of toxicity in regards to that. Uh, that I could like, I could get it. I could just talk about forever, but just be be mindful about that for yourself don't let the fact that you absolutely love you know games or movies or even animation don't let any of that get in the way of you making sure that you're gonna look out for yourself right yeah flip normals uh they they actually they work in the vfx industry those guys so they know pretty well um how bad it can get. <laughs> yeah, the idea is to just keep working, just keep going at it, just keep uh, keep doing what you gotta do. Always, always be doing what you like to do as well, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Called veterans after five years. I know. I know. There's so many people that leave this industry. It's, it's really sad. Like, people don't talk about how much burnout there is. So many people just leave the industry. They're just like, or, or take like these really long breaks. Um, another thing, too, is people don't realize how much uh, physical labor artwork is, right? Um, you know, if you're expecting an artist to sit there drawing for eight, even like just even even just an eight hour day, just constant drawing, the amount of pain and buildup from this constant like these micro movements and sitting is a toll on the body. Um, so you know, mixing mixing tasks up, giving breaks and stuff. But then if you're getting an artist to sit there doing stuff for 60, 80 hours a week over and over again, the burnout is not just mental, it's physical as well. A lot of people I know end up with um, injuries. Uh, this can result from eyes to now you're having crazy headaches, you've got uh, 
chronic pain. There's a lot of issues with shoulders. I have a shoulder issue. Um, there's a lot of issues with uh, carpal tunnel and, you know, your, all of your, your, your wrist issues, even your back, even if you have a perfect chair, your back can still screw up. Even if you have a standing desk and you're just, you're doing everything right, you can still screw up because it's very demanding. You're in the same place. You're doing the same. This is not really what you're meant to do. So people don't, they're like, oh, you're just doing stuff for fun. You're doing art uh, for a living. You must just be having such like, you know, the time of your life, you know, it's not hard. You're just drawing, you're just painting, you're just sculpting, whatever. But it's very physically demanding um, on top of everything because of all of the micro movements that you're doing and people don't understand that. So Another thing to keep in mind is you actually really should, as an artist, you really should do strength training. I know that sounds like kind of, I mean, everybody should, but as an artist, I really recommend people do strength training and resistance training. Um, just like, you know, for your scapula, for your, your, your wrists and your forearms. And opening up your hamstrings as well will reduce a lot of knee pain, a lot of back pain, right? You're going to start feeling, if you're young right now, okay, you might think, ah, like, I don't feel any of that. Like, I'm an elastic band. Good for you. But as soon as you hit 25 and onwards, shit's going to start hitting the fan. You're going to wake up. You're going to start cracking. You're going to be like, what is going on? Am I dying? And from that point, it's only gonna get worse unless you start strength training and do that something, do something like 15 minutes of resistance, of stretching, anything every single day to get full body in. It's really important. Focus on your shoulder blades and your shoulders and your wrists, especially. Okay? Important. Really important. Eye drops. Uh, just make sure that you're hydrated and keep your screen far enough away from your face that it's not like... Even, even with the Cintiq, I try not to be doing this. I'm trying to work, you know, far enough away from it that it's not going to be a serious problem. Make dark backgrounds, you know, don't have the uh, bright lights like burning your retinas out okay angelus so there's actually interesting enough is there are there there are studies that are going on about what blue light can do to your skin but i would i would argue that right now it's not in the same camp as uh as uv damage but um Apparently, apparently, I'm not just talking about the Pokemane scandal.
He removed all the fluorescent lights and only had warm lamps and everyone wanted to be in there all the time. I mean, yeah, the fluorescent lights are bad, man. They're so brutal. Hate them. God, I hate them so much. And they don't keep me awake either. They just make me feel like... Honestly, I don't know. Does anybody else have this problem? Like, specific lighting makes you kind of derealize. Like, fluorescent lighting is some of that. Like, I have issues at the mall. Like, I start to have, it, like, I don't know. It almost feels like everything starts ghosting. Fluorescent lights are awful. I hate them. Stop pokey out here. Okay. Okay, T3. Oh my god. Don't want to wake up one day with RSI and then been struggling for the rest of your life. Yeah, just exactly, exactly. But I mean, that's where I am, right? And I thought I was doing everything right, but I wasn't. Uh, the pandemic screwed me up because I stopped going to the gym and all of a sudden I thought that I could do what I used to do, but I, my body was like, no, actually you can't because you stopped going to the gym. And now I'm, now I have like this, like, constant issue with my shoulder that I'm dealing with. So just, uh... Forewarning, youngins! Yeah, Hannibal, yeah. It's awful. Oh, dude, flickering, flickering old lights can just suck it. I'd rather be in pitch black. Wah! Yellow lights? Blah. I don't like that either. It needs to be like a, like, mid... midway. Intense yellow. Bleh. Hate it. Okay. I'm, uh, it's, it's 10 p.m. I should probably get off now. That was four hours, but here we go. Here's Beetle that I barely did anything in the last little bit for, but we've got a Beetle. Yay us. Yay. Look at us. We've got an ornate Beetle. I feel like we did pretty good today. GG's. Here, I'll put him on the screen. Like a display. Wow. He's so cute. Wait. There we go. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I will see you in the next one. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'll tell you when my July schedule is up. I'm not sure what when I'm going to be doing that on the stream. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good night. If you have not followed this channel on wherever platform that you're watching, definitely do that because there's other artists that stream here, not just me. This is not my channel. I'm just a volunteer. Uh, but the other artists that stream here have different workflows, different subject matter, different experience. So if you have any questions, you can ask them about it if I have not answered anything. And of course, if you have any questions that maybe I haven't answered during the stream because I was too focused on maggots or something, you can uh, ask them on any of my socials. Feel free to ask and reach out anytime you want. Um, yeah. Okay. We good? I'm going to go to sleep now. No, I'm not. I'm going to work out and then I'm going to go to sleep. Okay, bye. I'll see you guys next time. See you. Uh, I probably missed something, but it's fine.